Okay, welcome back to the uh, Red Barns website. Uh, I've uh, wanted to do this for a while to uh, find a way where I could show you how I work on my computer. And basically what we're doing today is I'm going to draw up my uh, 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 NACA foil section that I got from the little program I got online, the uh, uh, NACA Gen 4 program. Uh, it's a DOS base, and I haven't been able to figure out a way to make a, a screen capture of it. So basically what I have to do is uh, write the information down on a piece of paper and then come in and then uh, build up a little box. So I know I've got the very nose up here. You can see is at zero. Uh, and so I have a zero, zero line. So the first line back is at 1.5. Now that's a check mark. Uh, it gives you, uh, on the program itself, it gives you a grid of about eight, at least eight, maybe more uh, lines, distances back on either side of the, uh, the zero, zero line, or the horizontal line, which I refer to here as the downs and the ups and the back. So an inch and a half back from the very zero here, uh, I uh, put in a line of uh, up and down, and so I'll click on one. You can see here, oh, let's see, horizontally, yeah, 455, five, and uh, here's our zero. They've got a whole bunch of other numbers in here, too, but uh, basically that's what it is. And then the widest part, the whole, uh, this foil is an inch thick uh, at the in the middle, and it's at the three inches back mark, and then I have another check uh, back here at eight inches, uh, which is a, a .2 219 it'll show up as 0.22 on if I or if I click on one of these things here you'll see the 0.22 above and below the line of minus and the positive so let's get back up in here and we will pick our Bezier curve tool and we'll go over here and figure out okay we're on zero zero and I'll click there and I'm going to come back up here to three, and this should be my line. I'll have to go check it again. I got so many of them in there. I'll show you why I have it. Give it a click, and then I'll come down here to the 10 on the zero, zero again, and I'll double click it to kill that operation. And then I'll go into the um, um, select handle up here, and we'll select this. Let's go in, get a little closer look here. Yes, I'm on the. Make certain that's a yeah, half inch minus. Okay, so I'm I'm on my spot. So let me zoom back just a hair here, and I will double click on this again and make it. The secret to this, if you're drawing them with a a two D drawing program, is the Bezier curve handle needs to be symmetric. So we'll click it out, and you'll see that it's always equal. If I did a smooth, let's go on undo this if I was to click on a smooth I'd only pull one handle at a time and they could be different links and whatever so I don't want to do that so let's go ahead and undo that and undo that again well let's make that a symmetrical okay we're back again now we want to go along parallel over to our zero zero line so now when we go back to see what we've got, you can see they're equal distance. We've got a nice arc here. Okay, let me go ahead and uh, I don't want that uh, part of the group. So I'll select that and we'll go up here into the mirroring objects. And I want to reflect about a copy and then I'll drag that guy down. I got so many handles in there. And I'll drag a handle if I don't get the right thing. Okay. And then I'll shift click. And then I got two of them here. And let's join them up and let's give them some color. Okay. Ah, undo the move. Let's get back out here. Okay. Now, the other thing I want to do. As I said, we were going to check that one crossing point, which is where are we at here. I'm beginning to wonder if this thing is. 
Something's wrong. Let me start over again. Three. Oh. Come on, get over here. Which one? Zero. Yeah, okay. Okay. I'll make a copy of it and bring it down here. Symmetrical handle. I think I might have Join them together and give them some color. Okay. Now let me go in. This is the 1.5 that I was telling you about. And if we go in even farther, you'll see that it crosses right on the line. And then we'll go back into the one back here. And you can see it's is right on too. If it's off a bit, it's uh, just the program. Okay, now that I've got this in here, let me go get a box. And we'll come back and we're going to be making... our plywood pieces. And I know this line here is 0.125 above, which is eighth of an inch. And let's go ahead and give it some color. And then go down and check the other end here. That's the full length, but I'm going to go right here. That's what I'm going to cut it off at. If I was to uh, give it no color, you'll see that I only have to... Uh, taper that much with my plane. Okay. And then we'll go in again and control D this guy and give it another, yeah, let's make it a yellow. And we'll bring it up here. That's what that line's for. And control D it again. We'll make another copy. Those are the uh, quarter inch pieces that I need to fit there. And so we will grab one of these guys and come back. I believe and that's about right. Yep. And then we'll make another box. And this is where the uh, eighth inch plywood comes in. And we'll make that red. And we'll control D it. And you'll see that uh, these will be quarter inch plywood and these will be eighth inch plywood. I have a bunch of marine grade. I have made these things where it's just stack upon stack of eighth inch plywood and you can get these things to be really, really uh, uh, fine tuned with hardly any shaping at all. Oops, I got the wrong tool. Okay, and then we'll, we'll make another one up here. And you can see I've got more room up there, so I'm going to delete that. And we're going to go up here for some, uh, I guess, quarter inch. We'll go another, uh, I saw a light purple, and zoom in. You can see the ends here are matching up, so okay. Uh, 
So I'll have a little bit of plywood in there and then I can make another sixteenth inch thick. And let's see, I guess we can go on the back side here too and put in a little bit. Okay, let's drag a handle over so we'll and then go back and zoom in again. And it slid on me. Okay. Now all I have to do is draw in some extra lines in here, bring in a curve. And then I know that everything along that line is going to be zero, zero. So if I click on this, I come up 0.37, and on my list on the wall I have of all these decimal equivalents, uh, 0.3750 is 3 eighths. So it's close enough for me for government work. So it's going to be 3 eighths. And so I'll mark this as 3 eighths inch. Uh, we'll get up here. 14 points. And then I'll settle that in right there. And so then I'll know that that distance back is 3 eighths of an inch. And then I'll need to uh, know what this guy is. So 0.92, so it's 15 sixteenths from the end. But I need to know that distance there. So I'll line it over there and move another line in here. 0.54, so that's 9 sixteenths in my language. Oh, I don't want to do that. So that's how I go about marking these things. And I'll do that throughout the whole thing. And then we've got our NACA 10 right in here at a 10 foot cord. And then I have another one on another page here, which is a NACA 008. And you can see all the, uh, the pieces, the little eighth inch plywood and the quarters. And that's ba this is my uh, rudder cross section because I wanted uh, something that was going to give me three one quarter inch thicknesses. Let's go ahead and zoom in here, and you can see I've got the the two pinks at a quarter and the blue at a quarter. So that'll give me my three inch three quarters inches that I needed to go up through the uh, pintles, and I'll have a little one eighth or the one sixteenths on either side. And all this material you'll see in the, uh, the yellowy green is going to be all fairing compound. So that's how I do these things. And um, those drawings like this will be what you'll see on your uh, um, plans when you get them from me, plus the, uh, the vertical dimensions of the rudder to uh, how long the, uh, the reach is up to the, uh, the tiller head and then where the pentels and all that kind of stuff goes to. The pentels will be a little rough because, you know, uh, whether or not you get them in the right spot, I'll give you uh, spots to put them on on the hull, which reminds me now, I haven't marked that, have I? No, I got to do that. Uh, I'll go do that right now. Um, and then uh, you will fit the pentels to the grudgeons after you mount them on the hull. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this. Uh, let me see if this came out right. Uh, and I can use it uh, on the web. So let me go click out and see what we got.